Welcome to Weld.com. Working off of an Everlast 250EX machine here, AC-DC. Uh, I've noticed some cool stuff here and I need to do some fit up, so I want to feature some, uh, some things that are in this machine here that I think are pretty cool. I'm going to fit, I'm, I'm simulating something that I want to build later on. I want to build myself a, a, a baby wood rack detailed next to my fireplace in my shop and I also want to build a, a a sheet metal box that I can keep all of my wood shavings and chips. When I split wood, I put a tarp down underneath the splitter and I shave. I save all these bark pieces and shavings and all this stuff. It's fantastic kindling. So the first thing I want to do is fit this up. The outside corner joint is how I'm going to put my, my box together and it'll probably be 14 gauge. So I want to just want to get some values working here. I think I'm at 150 amps. This is 10 gauge. So, but I wanted to show you the spot timer. I think we'll come back over the top of this and superimpose the pulse sequence on top of that. Okay, so we're not only where we're using the spot timer, where we can superimpose the pulse, and there's a lot of pulse settings and variations we can get into. So let me get my gloves and my hood on. I'll be right back. I'm simulating a fit up here using the spot timer. And I've got these outside corner joints where I just blasted this in here. I'll come back over the top of this in a minute and feature yet another adjustment on this machine, which is the straight pulse. I turned the pulse sequence on on top of the spot timer. I did increase the time to five seconds and I increased the uh, amperage to buck 70 because this is quarter inch thick, five sixteenths thick laser cut material and this is fixturing for the table. And the reason I turned the spot on, I don't, I don't want to put a whole bunch of heat in here and I just want some flat tacks in here. I'm not one to go in here and weld all of these slots and everything together. I just don't. It's strong enough. So I'm going to hit these tabs out here on the surface and that way I can go back and, and finish them off if I need to. So the reason that we did this uh, in the sequence with the pulse and everything was to keep the heat low and wash this tab into the edge of this other parent metal. It worked out nicely. I want to turn and I'll go ahead and finish this whole thing out where all the tabs are and everything. I'll probably hit it with a, a light sander across here to make sure there's no burrs or bumps anywhere. The next thing I want to do is go back to the piece that we fit up originally. I want to turn the pulse, or I'm sorry, I want to turn the spot sequence off and go straight pulse. I probably just want to lay a piece of 1 16th wire in there and go across that with just pure pulse and see what happens. Turn the amperage back down to 150, three pulses per second. Pretty low background. I'm just getting an idea of what the machine will do and my ideas for my finished joint. A little lay wire technique and just putting a 1 16th wire down in the bottom of this groove, letting the machine pulse over the top of it. Keep the overall heat low. I did a, uh, a pulse sequence across the top of this just to kind of get a feel for what's going on with this machine and how I can incorporate that into my project. And uh, I'm pretty happy with what happened here. It's nice and smooth. Ah, I come up with a couple of edges right here. No extra charge for the little uh, voids right there on the very toe of that weld. If I was blending and sanding this, it's, uh, it's fine. I'd make those disappear. I know how to do that. So I'm thinking I could get um, 
I think I could do a good outside corner joint. You probably ask how come you don't do it with MIG. Uh, you know, maybe I'll go in and put a pattern when I build this thing since, since uh, one of my projects is not gonna, it's just gonna be holding wood chips and kindling. I don't need to completely seal weld everything, so I might lay it out and put a series of inch and a half, two inch long finished welds with the pulse in it and everything, keep the heat low, do the same thing on the lids and the hinges and everything just to make it look something different. So I can also see another really good application for this pulse on even on the spot weld, superimposed though with the uh, pulse or just straight up pulse. And that would be real thin wall tubing. Uh, I'm sure some of us have been welding some thin wall tubing projects like the, you know, inch and a half, inch and a quarter thin wall tubing like the 14 gauge tubing and you get everything fit up, you might have a little bit of a gap. And you're TIG welding on it, you blow a big hole. Or you're MIG welding on it, you blow a big hole. I'm thinking that this is uh, pretty nice for keeping the overall heat low and traveling across your seams, your joints, your miters. Uh, maybe even some of your light fillets and stuff without pouring the heat into the material and putting too much weld in it and blowing it up. So I, I've, I got to admit, I've blown up some tubing projects before, but I've also figured out how to keep the heat off of it, use small wires, and by putting less weld in it, let it just blend flush, and that way I'm not having to go back and do a tremendous amount of grinding if that's what I'm going to fit how it's going to finish out so hey let's drive on I think the next thing we can go to is some aluminum and check out the uh, the AC side of this machine too so let me get some aluminum prepared I'll be right back I switched over to straight AC uh, no pulse no anything again pure argon <clears throat> I've got an outside corner joint so the cameraman can get in here again I'm kind of running through some features on this machine so 180 amps, uh, uh, the Hertz, adjustable Hertz. I believe this machine goes from uh, 20 to 250. I believe I had it set at 90 so that you can hear the alternating current. And uh, we'll, see what we, we'll see what this does. I better cut this in half so I don't smack the camera guy back here. That's 90 hertz. I want to, let's play with the hertz a little bit so you can get it a, a feel and an understanding for what that's doing. Well, that's just exactly what I expected to see. Real wide, real wide soft arc. This, uh, this second, the first part of this weld we did at 90 hertz, which is kind of something normal that I'd set up on AC anymore on these inverters. The second weld, I turned the hertz way down. You could hear it, it was real soft and kind of wet sounding, uh, down to 20 cycles per second. Now I'm gonna go to, uh, I think the machine goes to 250. Let's just go up to around 200. You'll, you'll hear a big, big difference. Sometimes when I'm doing this, uh, demonstration I've got the machine right here next to me and I can just I can keep the arc going and and turn them up but we're, we're doing this manually and zooming in on these shots for you so you can see them so I'm going to change the machine up to like 200 cycles a second and you'll hear a, a pitch change with this arc now we've turned the Hertz up to like 200 and you're going to hear a, a noticeable 
uh, high pitch uh, weed eater on steroids type sound here. It's gonna, and you also notice that the arc shape kind of comes down. We're gonna drive this down into this outside corner joint. Noticeable difference in sound. <clears throat> Uh, visually, I noticed that I was uh, also picking up, this was a plasma cut edge. This material has been broke for a project on a, I believe it was an ag sprayer of some sort. I hit it with a flapper wheel, but I noticed when I turned that to the 200 hertz cycles, uh, or 200 hertz setting, I'm really kind of digging way into this thing and I was pulling up some oxides in this, um, off these surfaces and I had to change the the uh, timing pattern where how I was driving that filler metal in there weld still kind of looks the same so now uh, I think we should go into the uh, the pulse settings actually I could turn this up and superimpose I could superimpose the pulse over everything else that we have set on here so the the cycles per second I could leave at 200 I could turn a pulse sequence on. Let's try that. I want to. I want to get into a pulse sequence that you really want to avoid with aluminum. And when we do this setting, it'll make sense. If we can fit. If we can photograph this, it'll make sense to you. But this is something you really want to avoid. I've left the machine. We're on the alternating side on uh, on some on some TIG on alternating current. I've left the uh, Hertz at 200, and I went ahead and put, turned the pulse sequence on. And I have three pulses per second, 50% uh, on time, 50% background. And I, I want to run over the top of this so the camera can zoom in for you. We'll rearrange this pattern and then we'll get into some settings that I think are a little bit dangerous on aluminum and I'll show you why. So a minute ago, I think we were at uh, three pulses per second, about 50% on time, 50% uh, background. And let's say that we're goofing around and you figure out that you want to make this stack dime appearance and uh, you realize that we go one pulse per second, a whole bunch of on time, very little background. Here's what you're going to run into. And you'll notice on a lot of good aluminum welds, you'll see people when they, when they terminate the weld, they come out of the amperage real slow and fill up that crater. Aluminum has a metallurgical condition called hot shortness where it's real weak. And you just terminate a weld instantly and it creates a little star fissure in the weld. Uh, I think we've all seen really good looking aluminum welds like on trailers, maybe they were done with a spool gun and they have a nice, I mean, good looking weld for eight, 10 inches. And there's a crack running right down through the middle of the weld. What, where'd that come from? It is started by incorrect termination of that weld. If you've heard the term burn back, uh, that is coming out of that weld soft and still fill, feeding filler wire to, to fill that crater up. So imagine having a really good looking weld and I'll create one here in a minute for the B-roll camera. I'll create a nice big old deep star crack right down in this, uh, deep in this weld here. But I wanna do it with a pulse too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pulse this and as I'm traveling, the background, it's, it's gonna get real hot. The background is gonna be so low that it's just gonna freeze it way too fast. And I'm gonna travel beyond, so I'm purposely gonna leave a series of these voids in here. Let's see if we can do it. So what I just got through doing was 
yeah, they're nice big overlapping spot welds, but essentially what I did was make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I just made 11 holes in this well, the surface indention in here. They're not as deep as I could have. I can purposely, uh, I'll do a little bit more of this weld and I'll come out of this thing and leave a nice crater in it. I want to create this star fissure down inside there. You know, how would we, how would we correct that? I would come in here and turn up the background amperage, probably turn up the pulses per second. Turn up the background amperage, <clears throat> increase the pulses per second, the weld pool stays a little more fluid. I also did a slight oscillation as I was going down through here to get rid of that. So, you know, find out what works for you. Right now I'm seeing that the machine, uh, the Severlast 250 EX has a lot of adjustments and features, some cool beneficial stuff. Uh, I'm dreaming of projects that I could do with it where I could use all these features and stuff. So. Uh, again, next thing I'm going to do is make a little bit of a weld and leave this crater crack in this aluminum. It's real easy to do. I turned the pulse off. I don't just want to continue a little bit more of this weld. I'm going to come out here just past this last pack. I turned the uh, pulse sequence off and I was trying to come out here and you know come into this weld and then leave the filler wire out of it and create this crack thing and I'm not getting it to crack. I'm leaving the little void. It looks like a little fish eye, but I'm not getting it to crack like I've normally seen. So uh, if you weld left enough aluminum, I know you've seen it before and that's what it's caused by is just a sudden termination while your weld pool is uh, real fluid and wet. If you just end the amperage and you're done, it creates that, uh, creates that crack in there. TIG welding on plate and pipe, open groove, same thing. You've been walking a nice route up and you need to stop, grab another filler wire or something. And if you just stop instantly, you'll see that's kind of the same thing. It's called piping porosity on carbon steel and stainless steel. On aluminum, it's that star fissure crack that's in the crater of the weld. So. Again, recap on the Everlast 250EX AC, DC, uh, stick, TIG, uh, pulse, spot timer, cool machine. I've, I've, I've enjoyed that test run. I think I want to get into something else with maybe some stick on some pipe or something like that. So I hope this helps. Uh, appreciate your comments. Thanks for watching Weld.com. Make sure you subscribe to the videos. Thank you. That was real.